Well, hi, good morning. Thanks for joining me in my shop. Uh, let's test a bunch of old capacitors. These ones here. Uh, these are the guys I just took out of the uh, radio I've been working on. These look terrible. They just look horrible. And my guess is they're all going to test horrible too. But my guess is often wrong on these things. So why don't we go through them and see what we got. Now I was guessing the size of all these. Um, and that's about it. That's about all I can say. <laughs> what ugly looking capacitors. Some of these don't have much leads coming out of them anymore, so I may not be able to test them. So, eeny meeny miny mo, this is the one first to go. This is the smallest, the smallest one. Okay, I'm going to be testing them on a uh, Heathkit tester here. This is a tester that will uh, detect and uh, present on this magic eye uh, a qualitative measure of how much electricity is leaking through one of these. Now, it shouldn't leak any electricity. And then I have this other meter here, the one I'm taking the leads out of, that uh, that we can also use, but if the Capacitor is very leaky, which I imagine all these are. I really can't test its, its uh, capacitance with any of these instruments. Let's find out here. Okay, so that's first going to put. It's first going to put 25 volts onto it. You see the setting here is 25. And this setting over here, which I occasionally forget about, is set correctly, too. So let's take a look at the uh, eye. So what it's going to do is it's going to snap closed and pop open, uh, depending upon the condition of the capacitor. So here we go, 25 volts. And you can see it opened all the way. 150 volts, how much voltage do you want to put on something like this? So we'll go, we'll go 250 volts here. And now you can see some leakage showing up. Not as bad as I expected. Too leaky to measure the actual uh, capacitance on that. So, not terrible. But not very good at the same time. Let's try the next one here. expecting. So that's virtually showing up as a short circuit. Doesn't mean it's a short circuit though. But uh, in terms of good and bad, ooh, that's a bad, bad, bad one. Now it kind of depends where these are in the radio circuit. Uh, some places are more sensitive than others for leakage. Like if this is a capacitor blocking DC from reaching a grid. A little bit of leak going to cause big problems. Okay, and again, this is kind of a qualitative or comparative test that I'm doing here. Oh, we never got off 25 in the last one. Okay. Stare into the eye. Well, that kind of answers that question. Just, just so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just rotating this control. Like that. Okay, so that's two really bad ones. Okay, next, 25 volts. Well, wow, 
Okay, so my I anticipated these as testing really bad, and that appears to be exactly what's happening here. So this one, the lead is broken right off, right, right on the edge there. It's pretty no good. I'm willing to bet these were hand built uh, in a factory setting. It's just because they're so inconsistent and glucky. Glucky, yes, there's the word. Okay, here we go. It's gooky and ugly at, ugly at the same time. Here we go. Now what? So these, these now really do qualify as among the worst capacitors I've ever taken out of a radio. Should we even bother with the big one? Yeah, we gotta do the big one. Well, these would drag down the performance of the radio just about anywhere they go. Okay, big guy. Surprise there. Can't even sustain 25 volts. These are all junk piles. So what about this one? This is the second one, second, first or second one I took out. similar to the first one. 150 volts. It's not opening all the way. So far from the qualifying as good, that's for sure. Now um, I did take out a bunch of really old electrolytics. One of the things I wanted to mention was that this one here, this is a Hunts capacitor. Hello British viewers. Look, another Hunts capacitor coming out of a radio here in Canada. It's the surge proof type. AH Hunt Limited. Does that say? Okay, I, don't know, I don't know if I can get my camera now. Garrett Lands. Lands? Garrett. Garrett Lands Dot. I don't know what that is, Lands. Garrett Lands London. Established 1901. British. British made by Hunts. They kind of. They a fancy uh, H. What's that? Look at those happy H's there. Really happy H's. Let's see how happy they really are. Okay, I gotta throw my. Uh, switch here to electrolytic. There is a course of polarity to this test, so you want to make sure you hook these up properly. Okay, 25 volts. What do we get? Now this is a big capacitor, so it takes quite a while to charge up, but I think the closed yeah, and that's indicating this guy is, is quite leaky too. Okay. And I've got a couple more. Okay, so this looks black, and this looks reddish. This is the Super Farad by Continental Carbon Company of. Canada. So we got a mixture of Canadian parts and British parts in here. 25 volts. Can you take it? Oh, it's just about the same as the last one. Yeah. So with my tester set on uh, on uh, 
to it set to test it. Like, I haven't bothered with this tester at all. I'm not going to. Um, but it's set on electrolytic. These batteries, these batteries. These capacitors should test really good. Okay, that the eye should behave the same as it would with the other kind of capacitor if they're all good. Does that make any sense? Did that make sense? Maybe that didn't make sense. There. Okay, here we go. Fire one. It's similar to the last one. This is a dual capacitor, so I'll go on the other side here. I'm just moving the clip lead to the other wire. A little bit better on the other side. 25 volts, but if we give it 150, there's that little pop sound there. What's going on? I got a loose clip lead. Why is it jumping? It's a jumping. I've never seen that before on my tester. Okay, so I'm wiggling the leads. So, you know what? I think maybe this guy's breaking down. Never seen that before. What if I, uh, what if I, now you might hear something on the video. Wait a minute, I can listen to. Let me put my headphones on here. We'll hear if, if any of that's coming through. No, no, I don't hear any, uh, I don't hear any clicking at all. Sometimes electrical discharges in my shop make uh, sounds on the video that actually are not audible in my shop here. And last thing, maybe we'll turn on an AM radio here. Okay, so that's just an AM radio playing, and I'm just going to work this control again. much noise up there. Right. Yeah, try it here. No. No no sounds of discharges, but I have one more trick up my sleeve here. I don't think I can pull it off. Let's put an AM radio right, right, right next to the actual capacitor here. But you know what? I, I don't have one. Ah. What? I don't have a radio handy. Okay, so that's it for uh, for testing all of these capacitors. The bottom line is, they are all bad, bad, bad. Good thing I got rid of them all. And. Uh, I think really the next stage with this radio, here it is here, is going to be uh, performing an alignment to see what kind of performance we can get out of it at this point. So there we are. Thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll join you on the next, next video. See ya.